Hello class, this is going to be weird. You're getting the real Robert Murphy here in Spirit Week. In return for going easy on you and not giving you much, if any, homework, I'm going to be my real self. And it turns out I'm a rather odd guy. I have a very strange hobby, and uh, this hobby is something that not too many people have in common with me, but I have found lots of them on the internet, and that a lot of people think is very unusual. But I am in good company. I think uh, J.R.R. Tolkien is a pretty cool guy, and he and I have the same hobby. And in the newspaper, the school newspaper in 2015 and in 2016, some kids found out about my involvement with Parseltongue. It came out uh, to some people what I do for fun when I'm not at school and when I'm not doing math. I invent languages. That's pretty weird. I know. That's not very common. Uh, most people would think that that is a very unusual hobby. And it is, but it is the perfect one for me because it is so technical and you have to know so much at any given moment, but it's also very creative and fun and expressive. So I had invented a bunch of different languages. I had done some for Far East Asia. I had done some for Europe. I had done some uh, for uh, magical purposes. And so I thought, you know, the one I don't have is an African language. So I tried to start inventing an African language, and I imagined it on this island out here in the Indian Ocean, and I tried to think about what would they have for sounds and what would they have for writing. And then I started to think, what would they do for math? What would their idea about math be? And, and I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the math that we use, the symbols and the sounds that we use, suck. That um, the decimal system, and dec is Latin for 10, that this 10 number system that we use is really, really crummy. Is that when you're a little kid and you're learning the patterns of the threes and the fours and the sixes and the sevens, there's just no pattern. Like, like that pattern that you learn, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, that's a pattern. That is a smoking hot, often repeating, cool pattern. And then the twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then you just have a 1 in front, but you say 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, again, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. That's a great pattern. What would it take for a number system to have a similar kind of pattern. All right, so obviously I'm gonna invent something weird for you and it's not going to have 10 as its foundation. Now before you get up in arms and you say, what good is this? Like I say in your booklet, the point of learning all this, why I think this still fits into a math class and not just a creative language construction class, which we don't have, um, the reason I say that it fits in is because when you go to teach people math, and all of us have to do that to some extent, we're all going to interact with little kids, we're all going to interact with people who aren't as good as math that we are. And if you're in my class, you're in the top 10% or 2% or 1% of all human beings who have ever lived as far as technical math abilities that calculus wasn't invented until the 1700s, and most people don't know how to do what you know how to do. So when you're talking to middle schoolers and younger, and you try to explain arithmetic, you're just gonna say, well, you just multiply, you just add, you just subtract, duh, it's obvious. And they're gonna look at you and say, no, it's not obvious, what's going on? So one of the great benefits to learning another base numeral system is that it puts you in their shoes and lets you feel sympathetic to the people who are learning their times tables and basic rules of addition and multiplication. And it helps me see if you actually understand how multiplication and addition work. I think you, you will find that you don't actually know your own country, your own family, your own 
city until you go somewhere else, until you interact with some people who don't do it that way. And that fish don't know water and you don't know decimal until you encounter something else. So this other pattern that we would wish for um, would be something like the Roman numerals where it's pretty obvious once you've gotten to the halfway point that you have one, two, three are written like your fingers. Um, some people in some systems, there's a lot of versions of Roman numerals that have existed, did um, four tick marks for four. But then obviously, no matter what, once you got to five, the system started over again. Five is a full hand, and then once you start on your next hand, then you've got a full hand shown with f five, V, and then you start with the ones, two, three again. So that's pretty transparent. That's a pretty nice system. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have a system that was so transparent like that, unlike our Arabic numerals? So here is what I invented. And if you look on your packet on page 9, you can see this system. And I've laid it out in a clock because we're going to have base 12. And the thing that you're most familiar with that has 12 are the hands of a clock. So um, unlike the hands of a clock, I need to show you the symbol for zero. So straight up there is the symbol for zero. And then going around in clockwise fashion are the numbers of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, yeah, take a look at that. See what do you notice? What do you see about these shapes that I've chosen? Why do you think I chose them? What's interesting? What's patternful about these? So um, obviously, I came up with these in the midst of my creating a language. And the sound was what I was working with the most. And I wanted the sound to tell you something about the number. So um, the, the letters of my language that I invented are part of the shape of these numbers. But what's not there, what's not seen, are the vowels. So we need to start with the vowels. And these vowels are the plain, simple vowels of like Spanish. So, u o e, u o e, u o e, u o e. That that is going to be the pattern that uh, the numbers all follow. So if it is evenly divisible by three, it's going to have a u. Um, if you divide by three and the remainder is one, it's going to have a o. And if you divide by three and the remainder is two, it's going to have an e. So always, 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 you can just reorient yourself to this pattern, u o e, u o e, and that will tell us the name of the numbers in that pattern. Okay. Next up on page eight, I show you six of the letters of the alphabet that I invented. You don't have to learn any more than that. That's all that we're going to be talking about. And these letters are uh, all kind of U-shaped, cup-shaped sort of letters. And so uh, an up hump like that is an M. A hump going off to the right is a V. A U-shaped thing is a W. Ooh, uh, that, that should be not too hard to guess. And then a cup looking like the letter C, uh, unfortunately, is the letter R. But that's, those are the four letters that you have to know that are sort of cup-shaped, M, V, W, and R. And then there are two straight lines. A vertical line is the letter N, and a horizontal line is the letter Y. So worth your time if you're trying to orient yourself for how to uh, figure out these numbers that I've invented. Those are the six letters that you need to know. And combine that with the vowel pattern, and you've got everything. So if we look again at the, uh, the symbols that uh, I have invented here, you can see that at the straight up position, at the 12 o'clock position, the number for zero has got a uh, up hump, which we said is an M, and it's got a vertical line, which we said is an N. And then we said that the first vowel is U. So M plus U plus N equals moon. So Somebody who spoke Kiyavona, the language that I invented, would be able to just look at that and say, oh, I can see the M and the N. This must be pronounced moon. At the 1 o'clock position, there is still an M. But now, sticking off to the right of it is a Y. And the second vowel is O. So this is M-O-Y-Moy is how that is pronounced. 
So on and on and on, you can just straight up read these. That the numbers are not a separate set of symbols. Like in English, we have 26 letters plus 10 number symbols. So somebody coming from Mars would say, well, really, you have 36 symbols that you want me to get used to. And that would not be the case in Kiyavona. So if we combine all of those letters, and I really encourage you to take a moment, pause the video, and dissect all my numbers, you can see there's that vowel pattern, oo o e oo o e oo o e and then the up humps are M, and the vertical lines and horizontal lines, they all make sense very, very logical. So this means that the symbols, the, the numbers for uh, all the way around the clock are moon, moi, nev, yu, von, wei, nu, yo, ren, rui, nor, and yem. And this is uh, perhaps not always the way that you would want to read these symbols as an English speaker. English has some terrible rules about what we do. So to give you a hint of what I'm saying here, look again. This is moon, moi, nev, yuv, uh, von, wei, nu, yo, ren, rui, nor, and yem. But if you, if you stick to my letters and that this is absolutely always consistent, always u, o, always o, always e, always m, always v, always w, always n, all, yeah, you get it. All these letters are very, very consistent. So you should, on your notes there, on your, on your packet, just write this in. Practice writing the clock one time. I think it will help you a lot. Um, more than once would be better. So pause the video, copy down these symbols in your own handwriting. It'll help you learn. So these symbols have a great deal of symmetry. Uh, the reason I picked these is that they have patterns galore. In fact, this was the most amount of patterns that I could find. I tried to max out patterns in 12. So this is, this, is, this is the most. So I think there's even more than I know about uh, because of the way I did geometry to set it up. So um, the evens, if you look at the clock again, what do all the evens have in common? Well, look at those symbols there. Here they are. You can see the symbols. They all have a vertical line in them, which turns out to be, when you're saying them, moon, nev, von, nu, ren, nor. They all have the letter N, and that's going to be your clue. You could listen to numbers, and you could tell if someone was listing off numbers if they were all even, something you can't necessarily tell from the sound of English. Uh, the same way then with the odds. If you look at the shape, they all have a horizontal line in them, which turns out to be the letter Y, that you could listen for the sound of the letter Y, and that would get you to be able to hear how the prevalence of odd and even in somebody rattling off a bunch of numbers. So there are tons and tons of patterns. The threes, the threes plus one, the threes plus two, um, that that turns out to have a uh, discernible pattern to it, both visually and audibly, that there are patterns to the fours, to the fours offset ones, to the sixes, on and on and on and on. This is what we will be exploring next week during Spirit Week. So what I would like for you to do is I've got a separate video of uh, the song that I did for counting 1 to 24, 1 to 20, however you want to think of it, um, that this is uh, one, uh, o, o 01 to 20. How about that? Um, that is something that you need to get familiar with to help you be able to, you need to be able to count. That's all that I really require is that you be able to count in this system. And to help you do that, to rec and recognize the symbols, to help you be able to count and recognize the symbols, I have given you a cardstock, hard, kind of cardboardy sort of paper. And what you need to do right now is pause the video and split it into 12 uh, air sectors and have each sector be uh, 7.0 centimeters by 7.2 centimeters. So turn your paper sideways in um, uh, landscape mode and then draw a line every uh, 7.2 seven centi centimeters and then this way every 7 uh, uh, centimeters that way, or if you're an inch-loving person, every two and three quarters inches and every two and thirteen sixteenth inches. That should split up your uh, cardstock paper into 12 even sections. And on the next 
uh, slide, I'll show you what to write on the front and back before you cut them up. You do need to know these symbols. So this is the one bit of homework is that you have to memorize the symbols and the names and we will have a quiz on that on Monday. So you've got your cardstock, you pause the video, you drew your lines, you're ready to write the symbols on your cardstock. So on the front of your uh, flashcards, you should write the symbols in this order. Pause the video. And on the back of your cardstock, you should write what each of those symbols uh, means. The value of it in our numerals and the pronunciation of it in the Key Yavona spelling. So pause the video and write those on the back of your cardstock. So how is next week going to go? What are we doing here in Spirit Week? Well, you're in groups and in your groups, you're going to present on a topic and you're going to make a poster and you need a preliminary version of your poster for while you present or you could do a PowerPoint or something like that um, but you will have a poster that uh, your group makes and everybody will vote on first, second, third place posters on Friday. Optionally, you could make a song, not many people do, but uh, that is also a way to get extra credit points by winning the song competition. What you are supposed to do is present on your topic for approximately seven minutes, giving examples of how it works, giving extra credit problems that you want to be moderately but not impossibly difficult for other people to solve. Um, it really helps people learn if you give them a handout, if you put your extra credit and the notes that they're supposed to take on a piece of paper that they can write on while you're talking and a poster can aid in your learning process and the song might aid in your teaching and learning process. Every day there will be extra quizzes that you can take and there are samples of them in the back with answers, samples in your uh, booklet that I've given you and you can earn cash for your group, cash, uh, for you to be able to spend on stuff to decorate your poster with. You can work on your posters in groups. I'll have some laptop carts for you to be able to research and print things if you need to do that. You can make a song and you can watch videos uh, not made by me but by other people on YouTube to help you gain more extra credit points if you need them. So on Monday, I, Mr. Murphy, will be presenting on counting, adding, and subtracting in Key Yavona numerals. And there will be a quiz over the symbols, the names, and their value. There are no presentations except by me on Monday. You can work on stuff, but two groups need to go on Tuesday. The group presenting about the Nevs and the groups presenting about, there's a group presenting about the Ma's and the News. So those two groups need to present on Tuesday. And then you all need to have given me a counting table by the end of the day on Tuesday. And a counting table is like this. Here's a counting table that you've done all your life for the tens. You need to make me one in Key Yavona numerals with twelves. Continuing with the schedule, on block day, there will be two groups go. Uh, they need to be the Uves and the Vones. And so that's two groups. And then you need to take another quiz of some kind. If you're a pretty basic person, you just need to take some simple addition. Um, but if you're feeling adventuresome, you can keep going and keep getting extra credit and cash for your groups. On Friday, there will be two groups going. One group talking about conversion to and from Key Yavona and decimal. And another group talking about hexadecimal and binary, the most common uh, numbers, numeral systems, base systems that aren't base 10 that are used all over the place in math and computers. On Friday also is due a uh, times table. So here's the times table that you're used to for the tens. You need to do me one of these on uh, Key Yavona numerals. And also there will be a homework for Friday due, uh, the signed Friday due the day we get back after Spirit Week from the textbook. There are six groups. Each group is presenting on one topic. Most of the topics have to do with a patternful number of symbols, but some groups will present on other topics related to change of base and different number systems. So 
I hope this has been an informative video. Please uh, contact me if I can help you understand something in any way. You do need to start studying these symbols, make those flashcards, learn the symbols, and get uh, conversant, the basics of Kiyavona numerals.